to Perspectives from the Field. My name is Keith Hodson, Assistant Professor of Music Education at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia, and also Director of Education for Zesuits Music in Reading, Pennsylvania. This podcast is supported and distributed by Zesuits Music as part of its commitment to music education and the professional development and support of all music educators. Our topic on this episode is Meet Zesuits' new educational representative. Uh, from the classroom to the school music service industry. And, our- and my special guest is Laura Quackenbush, Zezowitz's new educational representative. Welcome, Laura. Thanks, Keith. It's great to have you with us. So uh, let's start by telling us about your story. You know, where did you grow up? What inspired you to pursue music education? And, and tell us a little bit about your musical background. Sure. Um, I grew up in Broomall, Pennsylvania, which is in Delaware County, or as those of us who live here, we like to call it Delco. Um, And I am the daughter of a church organist. So of course, we had to play the piano as kids. Um, I started learning to play the piano when I was in third grade, um, but really was looking forward to when fourth grade came around and we were able to play instruments in school. So um, when I got to fourth grade, My mom and I, you know, you get the packet of all the instruments that come home from school and we were looking at, you know, what I can play. And my mom says, why don't you choose the flute? It fits in your backpack. So, all right, sounds good, Ma. I'll play the flute. That's great. So I played the flute until I um, went into middle school. And as in like most of our programs, uh, the instrumentation was in 100% balance. So the middle school band director was like, I've got like 25 flutes and no low brass. Like, do I have any volunteers? Will somebody please volunteer to play the low brass? So of course, being the, you know, little brown noser that I was as a kid, I was like, oh, I'll play, I'll play the tuba. So um, my middle school band director switches me over to the tuba and I've been playing the tuba ever since. And that was definitely (laughs) the perfect fit for me, for sure. Oh, that's great. Where'd you go to school? So I went through Marple Newtown uh, as a student and that's actually where I ended up teaching for, 13 years of my career. And um, I then went on to Westchester University and got my music education degree. And then my master's from Cabrini in uh, educational leadership and a principal certification. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Yeah. my master's is also in educational administration. How about that? uh, Great, I didn't know that. Oh, it's wonderful. So it's great to learn about you and uh, get to know you. So I'm glad we're doing this. so this is one of those things that they don't teach you in college, but can you share some of your experiences as a music teacher with the school um, music service dealers and the importance of that relationship, um, especially for an elementary school instrumental teacher? Sure. Yeah, I spent uh, the first five years of my career, I spent teaching uh, band and orchestra in the middle school. So I started in the middle school and of course we had a um, school service representative that came around to see us each week. Um, And, you know, we had a great relationship. And to be honest, that was like one of the highlights of my week because I loved seeing another uh, adult that was a musician and we could talk shop and really, you know, kind of enjoyed that each week. Um, But I didn't, as a middle school director, have as much involvement as I learned that I would when I moved down to the elementary schools. And they were just vital to getting really good quality instruments into the hands of my kids and getting them started on a good instrument. Um, So that was so important when I moved down. One of the things we actually had used a different school service provider before we switched over to Zeswitz. And one of the things that um, we had asked them to do, but they were unable to do for us was to help us put on a meet the instruments night to help our recruitment. And so when Zeswitz came in and said, hey, that's something we could help you with. Like we certainly could bring you some instruments and let your kids try them out and things like that. Uh, That was huge for us. They did, you know, little things like just, as I said, making sure we had quality instruments. and the, the step up instruments and the string instruments, that was huge for us. Um, just the, the repair, being able to have the repairs turned around within two weeks so that we weren't waiting and we didn't have kids that, um, you know, were, didn't have an instrument in their hands and couldn't be playing for two weeks. Um, so there were a lot of things that uh, Zeswitz really offered to our district um, that, you know, encouraged us to make the switch. And obviously I was quite pleased if I decided to make the jump over to work with you guys. Oh, that's great. Um, Can you share uh, with us your experiences um, as a music educator, uh, some of the highlights when you when you were teaching both middle school and elementary 
and and also maybe some of the factors uh, that affected your decision to make a career change uh, to move to the music service dealer. Yeah. So um, teaching middle school, um, I really enjoyed that age level, which it's not for everyone. Um, but that level of kids, I just really enjoyed them. I thought they were, they're just so malleable. They're like, they soak up everything you give them. Um, and they're goofy. And I just, I love that age level. Um, and what was really nice was you really can make some great music with middle school kids um, before they really decide, you know, how serious they want to be as musicians. And they just, it's, they still have a real joy for it, for sure. Um, when I moved to the elementaries, the amazing gift of getting to see a kid start at, in September and they can't put the instrument together, they're falling off their chairs, the mouthpieces are on backwards. And then by the end of the year, here are these kids who are really quite proficient on their instrument. It's just something you, you can't put a value on. That's just one of the coolest things I think as a music educator is just seeing them start from nothing and where they can get to. Um, and then having taught for as long as I did, you know, then you get to see them move up and go on to middle school and high school. And then, you, you know, you think about where they started and where they end up. And that's just, that's such a cool gift of an educator to be able to see that. So that was some of the highlights of, of teaching for sure. But um, my decision to move into the school service industry, it was obviously not one that I made overnight. Um, this was a long time coming. Um, one of my professional goals was always, I wanted to teach teachers. So why I went back to my master's as um, you know educational leadership and not like a master's in music education or something like that is I just always had the um, dream in my head and maybe I'll still do it one day, uh, but to work at the collegiate level and teach teachers because then you can impact so many more students by just that like networking of, well, if I can impact educators, they can go out and impact more students. And it's just this whole network of the impact that you can have. Um, and it's kind of the same thing in the school service industry. You know, I, I'm realizing that, hey, every school I get to go in and I see how all these different programs are run, I can take things from different teachers and pass them on to other teachers who might be struggling and, you know, need some encouragement or some advice or, hey, I saw them do this in this other school. So it just gives you that reach of being able to reach more kids and more programs, which is really cool. Oh, that's great. You know, it's, I love hearing you talk about, uh, you know, your experiences in middle school and elementary school. Oh, they're my dogs. There they go. Because um, I, 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 can, I can tell what an impact it had on, on you uh, and how much you enjoyed um, both, lo both levels of teaching. So, so tell us uh, what it's like for you as an educational representative with Zezwitz. Uh, what, are, what are some of the highlights of the job? Maybe describe what, the, what it is. Well, you just kind of talked about what it was like going from school to school and sometimes uh, sharing ideas of what's happening at another school uh, with, with some of your other clients, but kind of just give us a, an I, a idea of some of what's, what it's like being an ed rep. Yeah, I have really enjoyed it. Um, it's been a great change for me. It's been like a breath of fresh air. Um, like I said, getting into all these different programs and seeing, you know, especially being coming out of COVID and having some, you know, more music being made than we have in the past couple of years. It's just really great to be able to walk into those schools every day and see these teachers making music with their kids. Um, I see such a, a wide diverse range of not only teachers, but also students and levels of education, you know, from four to 12. And so it's just really cool to walk in and out of all those buildings. And of course, getting to see and talk to all these different educators, as much as I enjoyed when my school service reps would stop at the schools to see me, I love going in and talking to these educators, some of which were old friends that I either worked with and we did PMEA events together or, you know, we went to college together and we're actually getting to reconnect and haven't seen them in, you know, 15, 20 years. But it's just been really neat to, you know, be in that circuit again and, and getting out and seeing other music educators. Oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, so as you were talking, I was wondering about um, what interactions you, you have with some with the students. In the, in the buildings, like when you walk into lesson groups or maybe rehearsals, or do, do you get a chance to, to uh, have any interaction with any of the kids? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not not too, too much. Obviously, the, the little guys are like, just always so happy to see anyone. So as you walk into a school, you know, they're like, hey, or, you know, they're putting on a show or they're in the middle of a lesson. And I'll say, oh, hey, can I hear that? Like, that sounds really great. And they'd love to put on like a little, you know, two minute concert of the exercise they're working on, which always is really fun and just kind of brings me back for a moment and it's great for them. So yeah, it's always a good time. 
That's great. So next week's uh, NJMEA, uh, the New Jersey Music Educators Conference in Atlantic City. Have you been to NJMEA before? I have not. No. So I'm sure you, you, you had just mentioned PMEA a moment ago, so I'm sure you've attended the PMEA state conferences. Believe it or not, I never got to a state conference. I did oh. many uh, PMEA events, festivals, things like that, the professional development days, but it just never worked in our calendar for our district. And so like, I am so excited to go to both PMEA oh. and the PMEA. Yeah, we have both coming up. Um, so yeah. have you ever been to an exhibit hall and see the exhibitors? No, no I'm, I'm so, like, this is going to be all brand new for me. Oh, all right. Well, so we're going to have, uh, obviously, a, a booth in, in both uh, conferences. Uh, and so I'll be there with you and Randy, and uh, we're looking forward to holding down the fort in, in Atlantic City. And yeah. So what are you looking forward to about the NJMEA State Conference? Anything in particular? Um, I think, one, just the whole experience of getting to see, you know, just on this grand scale of all the vendors and um, getting to hear the student groups perform. My hope is to be able to sneak into a few of them and hear some uh, kids perform and um, maybe even, you know, a, a session or two that might pique my interest, just kind of pop in a little bit. So it, it's just really neat to be on this side of it, even though I'm not, you know, in education at the moment, like it's still just really cool to be able to still have my, you know, finger on the pulse of all of that and get to see these educators being the rep for Jersey. Um, I get to, you know, see some of my colleagues there. Hopefully some of our clients will be there and um, meet some of their friends and get to see them too. I think, you know, being a teacher and also being in the school service industry, you, you know, I'm a people person. And so I think what I really like the most is just all these relationships that, you know, we're going to get to form and see these people. Well, you, you have, I can tell you, you have the right personality to be at, at a booth to <laughs> meet, to meet new people because uh, yeah. it, it will attract um, uh you know, getting to know some new people. And, and that's what we're there to do. So for sure. Yeah. Well, Laura, I can't thank you enough for, for spending some time to talk with us and getting to know you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and experiences and expertise uh, with our audience. I personally want to thank you for, uh, you know, what you do each and every day for Zezowitz and, and for your, your school clients. To all my music educator friends, please continue to find opportunities to open more doors for all students to engage with music and with you. And thank you to Zezowitz Music and CEO Randy Shaler uh, for your continued support for music education. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, Keith.